right, everyone. I think we should be going here. So, hello, this is Rebecca Langman, your favorite interior designer with Revision Custom Home Design. Today I am working on, trying to really quickly do this because I've got a client that's only in town for a few days before I head back uh, home. So we want to get a quick start on this project uh, and hopefully get a set of plans over to a couple contractors to start the estimate process. So what I'm working on today, the client, thank goodness, um, the house was built in 2005. He does have a copy of the original blueprints. I was out on site today to confirm a few things because, you know, not everything's always built uh, the way that it is on paper, but it's always a good starting point. So I went out, confirmed a few things. Uh, today I'm going to be drawing up the existing plan. And then once I have the main floor of the house uh, drawn up, the basement is currently unfinished. Um, there are a couple... Uh, supporting walls, structural things, um, and of course utility things that are already in place, but we're going to work around that. So I want to get the existing plan done, and then when that's set, then I'm going to start on drawing out the plan that we have created for the basement. So we have a really good idea of what we want down there. We've um, kind of pencil sketched it out, walked the space, so we have a really good idea of how things are going to fit. I just need to get it on paper. I would say on paper, but I really mean on the computer, so because then once it's on the computer, we can print it out on paper. Old school, I guess. So anywho, hopefully you enjoy. Um, watch along while I get started here. Um, so to start out, I've already got my uh, Chief Architect program opened. And let's see here. Oh, all right, I think we're okay. All right. Perfect. So we've got a blank screen here, blank uh, starting. i move this off the side just a little ways. Okay. So I can hopefully get started here on drawing this plan. So I have, like I said, the original plans, or at least a photocopy of the original plans. So I'm working off of that for right now, and I'm not going to worry about all of the little details. Um, and in fact, I know already there's a few things that were done a little bit differently. I'm mostly just worried about getting the perimeter of the main drawn up, because the stuff on the main floor, we're not moving any walls, we're not doing really anything up there. I'll be able just to send the contractors a copy of this first floor plan so they can do their quick little estimates for paint and things like that. Um, really all I'm worried about is the exterior walls, the staircase, that's about it on the main floor. So uh, go ahead, we're going to get started by clicking on this exterior wall tool and we are just going to kind of get started. So I'm going to start, whenever I start with plants, I always just pick a starting corner and then just work my way clockwise around the building to get the dimensions that I need. Um, so right off the bat, this is gonna be obnoxious because there's a bay window, so that always throws a kink into the, into the measurements, but all right. So we've got, we don't have an overall dimension here, we just have a ballpark. So I know that it is 19 plus 23 plus 12. So that's, that's 20, 30, 42, 52, 54 feet. Okay. So we're going to come across here. We're going to draw something real close to 54 feet. Then on this side, it looks like we've got, let's see, that log carries over. That looks like 33 feet. And these are approximately, they don't have to be exact, because um, we will be making some adjustments here. Okay, so we've got 12. When I design houses, I try to keep everything, at least for the exterior perimeters, I start out with two foot increments. If I have to go to one foot, I will, but generally I try to keep everything in those two foot increments. Even numbers are just so much easier to work with, um, not to mention building materials are purchased and, and sold in um, two foot increments. So why buy a 10 foot board for a nine and a half foot wall? You're just going to be cutting a piece off. Seems silly to me, but I'm not in charge of everything, am I? So, <laughs> all right. So, so like for example, right here, I've got some dimensions here. That opening is nine foot eight wide. Uh, this wall here is five nine plus seven nine, so that's twelve thirteen six. Okay, oops. This 
ones, 15, six. So, not the way I would have drawn it for sure, but I wasn't the original architect on this or designer on this. And already this is not quite matching up because that should go there. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, nine foot six. And we go, there we go. Now there's a bay window over here, but we'll get to that here in a minute. There's also a bay window off the back of the dining room. So. Chief has, oh, Chief has their its snaps that go to certain default uh, angles, and you can turn that on or off, but um, I want 45 here. Okay. And then there's a similar one over here, so again, I'm just going to start over here, come across. Hey, Mom. Yeah, hi. Are you streaming? Yep. Um, it's not 45. You need you, we need you to bring us over to Grandpa and Grandma's house at 4. Okay. Remind me when it gets close. Alright. So now I've got to do... Break. Since this one's not on a corner. Okay. So now what we do, now that we've got the perimeter ball parked, now we go back and again, starting at that same corner in the back, I'm going to go across and fine tune all my dimensions. So we know we've got, that's 19 plus 23, which is 42. So switch over to my arrow tool. Okay. And then this here is four foot I want the dimension from, now that I check, Chief automatically does certain dimensions. You can go in and, of course, add. Okay, so I'm pretty close here. Using my cursor, I can see that blue line carrying across. My corner is just about where I want it. Hold on. I'm just using the arrow key now to. There we go, perfect. So now you can see where that blue line goes across my cursor line. You can see that my two corners are lined up. Um, and I've got my 12 foot dimension up here. I've got my 42 foot dimension up here. Oops. And I don't care about that dimension. I want now. It's wanting to. Oh, it's wanting to pull the dimension line to uh, the outside of the sheeting. I want the dimension line to the framing. So I'm gonna zoom in and snap that. So there you can see the overall dimension on the back is 54. I've got my 42 feet from corner to where the bay window starts, and then my bay window is 12 foot wide. And then since those are 45s, they are what they are. All right, so I think, and that's four foot, one and, it's gonna be actually just a little bit smaller. It's four foot 11 and five eighths. There we go. And then you have four foot eleven. Okay, so that actually matches up. Now those dimensions match what the plan said. Okay, so now I can continue around and 
This was the one this didn't have. going to work my way around the other way because I hate having to do all these little incremental it's a straight wall like I don't know why they didn't dimension it that way I, um, I mean I can see why they dimensioned out what they did but they didn't then go back and do an overall so we're gonna come on over here okay now the beginning of this is 12 foot 3 from the corner. Let's get this down. Okay. 8 foot 6 and 3 eighths. So that. No, that's not going to work. 2 foot 1 and a half. So this one's a little smaller bay window. The other one in the dining room is actually like a big part of the room that's bumped out. This is just a little tiny bump out um, so that the jacuzzi tub had a little more space. And then that is five foot six and three eighths. So. Okay. And then we know that wall was straight the whole way. So we're good there. And then it is Nine foot six. Well, that's a stupid number. Okay. So what that does, hold on. Let me move that so I can see it better. And then this should be five foot. This should be nine foot six. This is fifteen foot six. And that's 12 foot. So actually, now I know that I'm exactly right because when I got over here to the corner and I typed in that second dimension from the end, my first dimension popped into exactly what it should be to the inch. So I know I'm correct there. Which means, as I've come down this side and as I've gone that way, now I've met at this corner exactly where I need to be. So my perimeter is good. Yay! Um, the only thing I don't have on here is the garage. And the garage is at a weird angle. It's off the side. I kind of don't even want to bother drawing it because it's not necessary for the basement and anything um but i will just because okay and that's at a 30 degree angle it looks like so we're gonna come back here over here here and then it actually comes off of this corner okay and it does have the siding on the correct side um Chief wants to always put that siding on the outside, but sometimes if you draw it in the wrong sequence, it'll flip and you have to manually revert it. Um, so here we have, okay, so that's 19 foot, 21 foot, 27 foot 6. Okay, that's not where I want to get the dimension from. I want to go from this corner out. Twenty-one 
ones in there. That's more than that. 18, 18, 20, 30. 36. 37 foot 6, okay. And then 26. And then finish on back. This is 38 foot six. So that actually looks exactly like the plans I have, because um, where this meets the house here, there's a mudroom back in this corner, and that's how you enter from the garage into the house, or one of the entrances. So I'm going to label this garage real quick, okay. And like I said, up on the main floor, really the only other things that I'm worried about um, for, at least for the purpose of getting this plan over the contractor quick. I might go in and clean it up later, but um, the only other thing that I really am concerned about here is getting the staircase uh, drawn in correctly, because that's how we, of course, travel between floors, and I need that to translate down so that I can plan my basement. So, the staircase is over here. There's also a little mini wall here. And I'd have to look back um, at the listing photos. I don't, I don't know if I took a picture of the entryway today. Hold on. Okay, no, the picture I took of the front door doesn't show that. So that little side, this little mini wall right here, that, I think that one actually is a half wall with the railing attached to it. Um, but for the purpose of what I'm drawing today, just drawing a wall there is going to do that. Okay, so now that wall is so we know the landing is three foot and I hate stairs so right now I'm just going to literally draw the stairs with CAD lines I'll come back later and that's three foot six okay and that's the midline Close that off. Actually, that is not. Well, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that as a room divider. There we go. And the dimension there is 10 foot 6. So from here, I'm going to manually dimension this one real quick from the cab line to that invisible wall. Six. Okay. And this one here, again, I'm going to have to use this little room divider thing. And for that one, hold on, I'm going to have to dimension. To the interior, here we go. So we know that this is the staircase. Um, generally, uh, the magic rule of thumb for stairs, at least as a starting point, is 7-Eleven, meaning 7-inch uh, rise, 7 inch rise, 11 foot run. So I'm just spacing these lines 11 inches apart for the purpose of illustration. And that actually looks pretty close to what it would be, so yeah.
So I'm actually, just even though it's not 100%, um, I am just really quick going to slide this so this invisible wall lines up with that. So that way my, my stairs all look the same. So two foot nine, we'll be fine. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now we can go downstairs. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to real quick make one notation here. I'm going to use my text tool. I'm going to set it up. Use my arrow to go that way. And then go back to the tool. Down. Actually, well upside down that looks like up so that's really confusing so I'm gonna actually write out the whole word and again use my arrow line to do that and then I'm just gonna move this dimension out here oops it linked or snapped okay very cool so there's the main floor of the house um, there are a few other things up here there's a fireplace I'll come back and deal with that later. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now I want to build floor. Nope. Build. Where's framing? Where's basement? Ah, build foundation. There we go. Okay. So I want my eight foot walls. I'm not gonna worry about the garage because like I said, this is not, these are not construction documents. The house is already there. We're just working with what's inside. But I do want my eight foot ceilings for, um, so that when I go to do my elevations, they look correct. And we're driving a plan from the first floor. So that's why again, the first floor was correct, was important before moving to the basement. So now I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and use reference display to turn on my walls from above. this. Um, now this one I want to align with above, so there's a tool on the bottom here. Okay. Alright. So as you come down the stairs, this right here, the short section is where you enter the basement. This over here is unfinished space under the staircase. So I'm going to go ahead and do room divider here and there. Okay, yeah, there's not an option for that. So um, anyway, we don't have the staircase, so I'll make sure to get that drawn in. So now down here in the basement, I'm going to switch to that page on the plans here. Hold on. foundation and basement. Okay. So in the basement here, what we want to do, okay, now it does not have this jog in the foundation, so that is a um, cantilevered, sorry, jog blank. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this so there's no confusion. That foundation is, um, or that jacuzzi tub up above is cantilevered. But this bay is correct. That matches the dining room up above. Now what we need to do, there is a bearing wall that runs the length of this room, and it is already framed out um, to a certain point. So we're going to go ahead and do interior wall. 
it's actually pretty, I think it's, even, it's directly even with the bottom of the stairs. So we're going to come across here. Now, I measured to the corner post of what was already there, and it was 18 foot 6. Okay, so that, and then we'll do room divider from the end of here over to here. Now, I want to line that up. There we go. Line that up over to there. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Oh, it's because I had two invisible walls overlapped. Okay. So there we go. So actually, I can turn off my. Now that I've got my staircase in, um, I can turn off my reference display because really nothing else from upstairs is going to matter. That staircase was the only thing. So I've got that existing structural frame um, support wall in. It ends right there with a post, and then this right there, that upper section is a beam, and that actually continues, um, that beam actually runs across if I remember, there we go. So I'm going to make a quick little note. And then over here we have a, this wall comes out, let me see the dimensions here, okay, it doesn't come that far, Oop. it was the dimension line I wanted to move, not the, there we go, so this, five foot five. Nope, wrong way. Nope. Ah. There we go, five foot five. Okay, well, I know that it's right. I'm going to delete that dimension line. Okay. And then right here we have the furnace. Over here we have water heater. Now it is a tankless, but there is a few other, there are a few other little things, um, components and whatnot, so... There we go. And then here we have rough plumb for bath. There is a toilet stack. I'm going to just real quick draw that. It is located 14.2 from this back corner. And I keep trying to go to the outside. I don't like that. Okay, there we go. Close enough. I'll move my note back further over. Okay. So that's where the water closet is. So again, text tool. Okay. All right. And then we need to get the windows and doors in. And 
technically over here. Okay. This part, there is part of this wall. There's a footing for it, but it's um, siding. Okay. And actually the same for this bay. So I'm going to delete. There we go. And then we're just double checking. We're going to make sure we're aligned with above. And that one, it says we are. Okay, cool. And it's right about, it was right about even with that. So I'm actually going to slide this over just a little further. There we go. Oops is where that transition happened on the foundation. And the only reason that matters is because I want to show my windows and doors a little bit accurately. Okay, so we have a door over here. And it's a six foot. And it is a glass panel. Located, hold on a sec. Let's get this window in over here. And a window over here. And Chief wants me to dimension to the edge, but I want to dimension to the middle. So I'm dragging that to the midpoint of my window. Again, I'm going to dimension the same thing over here. Dimension to the midpoint. And then that'll get me over to the door as well. So I'm going to dimension from Sometimes you just got to fudge it. So I want to go to the midpoint and to the midpoint, okay. So that's two foot eight to the midpoint. And this is nine foot eight. And then the door is 20 foot 10. I'm actually not that far off. Okay. And then we've got windows here here and there. Okay, so that's what I've got in the basement. Now, currently, there is a wood stove and a kind of weird partial wall right around here. We're going to change that, but for right now I want to show where it's at. And it... Uh, I'm going to do and this was one of the ones um, I brought the set of plans with me to the job site so that I could double check because people draw plans and then the builders do different things sometimes it gets notated on the plans and passed down other times it doesn't if it was just kind of a quick change in the field so um, yeah so I just wanted to verify that. And it's a good thing I did because this wall was actually shown um, at only about 18 and a half feet from this back wall. And it's actually, as you can see, 20 foot two from this back wall over here. Um, and I'm not gonna worry too much about these lengths here. There was about four feet on either side of it. So it's close enough. Um, and then in my library, Pretty basic. Um, and that's actually showing one foot three to the back. I had measured one foot three to that pipe. So we're going to say about a foot. Eh, we'll go a smidgen less. Okay. 
and it's pretty well lined up with this end. Okay. So, for the basement plan, we got the windows in. Oh, there's one more beam over there. I forgot. Okay. But as far as existing, we'll take what I'm drawing up here and pair it with that set of plans. So I don't have to have this insanely perfect. I just need it good enough so that when I go to draw my proposed plan for the space, we can see what's going on here. So I've called out where the water heater goes. I've called out where the furnace goes. Um, I've called out where the rough plumb for the bathroom is. We know where the staircase is. And then over here, there's a beam that runs across there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. And so all the spaces make sense. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And that's it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is file save as, and instead of existing, I'm going to do proposed. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So now what I can do um, is actually... Good, okay. Um, hang on one sec. Okay, we're good. So now what I can do is I go in here and start drawing out what we've actually discussed for what we want proposed. Um, so the client and I were laughing about this, but apparently I am very good at attracting engineers with my marketing or I don't know what uh, because I asked him to send me a quick little list of what it was he was looking for and he sent me a 15 page PowerPoint with pictures and links to YouTube videos and even went out and bought his own little consumer version of a drafting program so that he could draw it out himself and send me his ideas. I get along with this personality quite well. My dad's an engineer, um, my mom was very artistic, but my dad was an engineer so I know how to communicate with that personality type. <laughs> All right, so in the basement, what we're trying to achieve, like I said, currently this space is, oops, um, currently this space is unfinished. It's a basement, it's there, but there are no finishes on the walls. Um, so we will of course be finishing out the walls, um, you know, framing up all of that and then making it look pretty. Uh, what we're doing in this space is there's gonna be a bedroom. There's going to be kind of a game corner. There's um, pinball table, shuffleboard, uh, air hockey, foosball, all of that. We've got a TV viewing area for a giant 85 inch TV. Uh, some sort of a bar little area, not necessarily with a countertop, but um, space for storage. A cigar room with some kind of display storage um, for some you know decorative items family heirlooms whatever and then there's gonna be a large bathroom shower and a little storage area so kind of the man's basement um, so what we're gonna do and like we're not gonna mess I mean we're really not messing with the, the what's there in terms of the existing walls with the exception I think of this one here by the fireplace and even that one, I'm not really going to mess with too much. Um, but this one here that runs left to right the entire length of the house, that's a structural bearing wall. We know that. Um, it's a wall to this point. There's a post. It's supported. There's a beam that runs across. Um, so we're really not going to mess with that. We, we're just, that is what it is. But it works. So we're going to enclose this area over here with the furnace. So we'll go ahead and use our interior wall tool. We're going to come on over like this, come back at about a 45, and then go ahead and just put a door on that. So we'll call this our utility room. And I'm just going to move that word. All right, easy peasy. I'm going to move the word beam over just so it's out of the way. 
And so this is one of those things where I'll probably do a walkthrough with the contractor because basement ceilings always have ductwork, beams, um, conduits, pipe, all of this kind of stuff that hangs down below the surface of the underside of the joists. And as much as possible, we want a flat ceiling. There's definitely places where that's not possible. We've got some uh, plumbing things that go through here and whatnot. So it's gonna be my job to walk through with the contractor and find the best solution for how to have those things enclosed while coming down as little as possible and also not having a bunch of jogs. So there's a spot over here adjacent to the beam where there's some ductwork running. Well, that's easy. You just run right across the bottom. Well, then there's a couple pipes here. So some people would come over, up, wrap the pipe. Personally, I want to come over all the way and just, and that way you only have one plane instead of joggy, joggy, joggy. Um, now, if there's ways to make it into like a coffin ceiling where you intentionally have those and it's symmetrical around the perimeter, that's one thing. In this room, that's not going to work. So we'll, I'll do a walkthrough to verify those uh, ceiling plane details. Okay, so we know that that wall is there. Um, what I want to do over here, so this is the corner where we're going to have a guest bedroom. It needs to be big enough for a king bed, um, but it's not a primary bedroom. So I'm going to go ahead and do a wall here. That's 15 feet. That's still quite good sized. Um, and I actually want to shrink this down. We're basically just going to have a wall behind the fireplace. And then, oh, I, oh that's an exterior. That's showing as an exterior. Okay, let's go up to wall types. Yep, see, I accidentally made that as a siding six. I want to make that interior four. Whoops. And then I'm going to come back this way. And I'm also going to do this. So now I'm going to start going in here and, and mapping things out according to what's comfortable. So this right here is sort of the entrance to the map to this bedroom down here in the basement, this guest bedroom. Um, anytime you have an area, for example, okay, so right over here, out here where the fireplace is, that's going to be a lounge area. There's going to be a sofa, chairs, um, big giant TV. That's a hangout area. <coughs> Ideally doors to bedrooms and doors to bathrooms should be not exactly on the perimeter of that. They should be set back a little ways or turned at an angle or something. Because if you're the guest in that guest room and people are out there using the room, but you want to go to bed, you don't necessarily want that door to be right there in case someone opens the wrong door or um, if it's just loud. It, it creates a little bit of, this is a private space, not a, a, a group space. So it's just a, a kind of a nice little detail that I always like to try and include. Um, so that's three foot ten. I'm gonna drop that down to let's say three foot seven. Okay. So there's the doorway to that bedroom. And then I wanna see what this measurement over here is. Six foot two. Okay. Um and it's gonna be a little less than that because um we will need to fur out this wall. Right now there's concrete. We, of course, need to fur that out so it's a nice, smooth drywall wall. So that'll be like this. Like that, okay. So my interior dimension should actually be to here. Oh, except that went to surface. When I do interior dimensions, I do framing to framing. So you can see there's that little outside and then the inside, that's half an inch, that's your sheetrock thickness. Okay, so let's just do five foot ten, make that nice and even. Okay, so then this can be a closet. Now, the upper portion of this, um, and I was talking with the client, the upper portion of this might have to be unusable because there's a vent from this fireplace that comes back like this and then connects up with the fireplace um, upstairs and then the chimney goes all the way up. So from a practical standpoint, 
it might only be that the lower half of that closet is usable, the upper half might just be drywalled in, but we'll make it look like a nice normal closet by having a full size door. We'll just drywall on the inside if we have to. So this just gives us a little bit of storage space. I'm gonna delete that measurement because I don't really need that. Um, and again, it just kind of creates that separation of, hey, this is a bedroom, this is a private space, all of that. And then this five foot 10, that's actually a really nice dimension because I think that's where I want to recess the bar a little ways. Um, Cause there's not a ton of room in this space. I mean, it, it, it is actually a very comfortable basement, but if we're going to have this out here, be where the sofa and chairs are for the TV, I think we need to set the bar back a little bit. So um, we're not going to do a wet bar. We're just doing cabinetry. Um, so that's five foot 10. You know what, I'm going to make that six foot one instead. There we go. Reason being, um, 24 inches is a fairly standard dimension for cabinetry. And so if we can do stock cabinetry, it's going to save us some money and still look nice. So we're going to do that. That bar is six foot one across. Well, six foot once you count the drywall. We'll do that. We make a little note here, bar. I'm just gonna move the dimension over here. Okay. And then most likely we were chatting about this. Um, because we don't need a wet bar, we don't need necessarily a big giant peninsula. Um, we might do some kind of like a little standing pub height table right over here. I think that would be a good use of that space. So the bar is there, it's visible, it's awesome, but it's not obtrusive. So, and it's set far enough back from the heat of this. So I kind of like that. So now we need to show that we can fit a bed in here. And I just need a king size bed. I think we'll do like that. And then we just need a closet. Mm. I think I'm going to do the closet over here. Sorry, I, one thing that I'm, I've played around with in chief a little bit is I don't quite always know when you're finishing a basement wall. This is not, it's, okay. it's interior four, but I don't need sheetrock on both sides of it. I just need it furred out from the basement wall. So I'm wondering if. I were to go into the define yeah see there we go there I could make a custom wall I'm not gonna worry about that today but I could make a custom wall I don't want siding for I want interior for there we go I could go in and define it to where it does not have that sheetrock on the outside but honestly I think I'm probably the only one that notices that for now so we'll leave it okay so really quick to get my closet the correct dimensions um, closet is two foot one and we'll make this seven foot one 
and then that way we can put a six foot bifold on it. So that's three feet between the end of the bed and the closet. That's enough space there. That has a little more space actually. So we could either scoot the bed over or over here you could have space for a dresser, space for nightstands. I'm not gonna fill out the whole room, but at least you can see that a king bed and surrounding furniture would fit in the space. So we're gonna go ahead and label this as bedroom. And I am going to just label it as guest bedroom, so that way, as we're looking at the plans, if the, you know anyone has questions, it's just easier to identify when you're more specific like that. Okay, so there's our guest bedroom. We've got our bar area. This over here is the game room, so I'm going to really quick just do the room divider right here. So now you can see that when it's all just that gray, that's all there. Um, we are going to enclose over here. And the dimensions for that, oops, I need a light. Five foot five by three foot. And that was roughly the interior dimension. dimension out and then that's going to need a door and it's a closet I always show closet doors but only partially open instead of fully open um, since they're used so rarely whereas like a bedroom door you want to show it fully fully open because it gets used a lot okay so here we're gonna call this there's not a um, pre-made one for it so I'm just gonna use family room game room. Okay, so then when I go to make my notes on this project, I'm going to make notes about the finish, um, and I'll be able to call it that specific room. So here we've got this utility space, and I'm actually going to set it back from the beam. We're going to have a lower drop ceiling because of that beam and some ductwork, but the wall doesn't need to be out that far, so I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the wall kind of pulled back like it is, because I don't think it needs to be out that far, and that'll help this space here feel more open. Um, here, we're going to do a wall that comes down from here. And there's just a tiny little bit of a jog to the bottom of the stairs. Um, so we're going to pretend that that's not there. We're going to go back this way just a little bit. And we're already going to have to do this. Okay. So we're going to do a break. We're going to pull that invisible wall back. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do a break. Okay. To here. Oh, and actually, we do need to get rid of this. There we go. All right. So by doing it this way, um, the fact that this stairwell wall and this wall are not perfectly lined up is not going to be noticeable because you won't be able to see that. We're just going to cap off the bottom of the stairs. We'll put a little closet door there or something. Um, you know, they can use that for storage. And then over here, I'm going to do this. Again, get out this dimension tool, check some of our interior dimensions here. So we're going to have this door here that goes into the bathroom. Okay. 
we're going to do three foot seven just to help that feel just a little more scaled. Okay. And then over here, we're going to do glass, oh, glass panel, not slab. Big double door into this, which is the cigar room. So again, we're going to start to label rooms. Um, and again, we'll call this a family room just because then we'll relabel it cigar room. Okay. And then this becomes we'll call that the TV room. Okay. And it's measuring to where I got that invisible room divider. Um, that little section is just kind of the bottom of the stairs. Okay, so we need to call it the stairs. We know that's the staircase. And then over here, I'm going to move this dimension line out of the way. It's no longer rough plumb, it is actually the bathroom. Um, so actually, I'm going to get rid of all of that. Okay, there we go. And I don't really need that. Well, oh yeah, nice symmetry. Sweet. See, that's why I did that. Okay. <laughs> don't we love when it works out like that? Okay. But then over here, we're going to do a bathroom. Okay, Under 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Yep, 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to do the bathroom. And then um, this space back here will be just storage. So I'll scoot that a little ways. Because I think what we're going to end up doing basically is... We're going to put that, and I need to make sure that that's approximately that 14 foot ideal, you know. So we'll go right there. Sweet. Okay. I would, but I don't. There we go. So my first thought, sorry, I stopped talking for a minute. My first thought was to fill in that nook with the cabinetry. But then that leaves the toilet floating out here in the middle of nowhere, which makes zero sense whatsoever. I'm really not a fan of that. And if at all possible, I know it's going to save money if we can put the toilet where it goes. Um, but this gives us a five foot vanity, which is more than enough for a basement bathroom. This is a guest bath. I think I might actually see that feels a lot. So I think that might actually feel a little better. It's I don't know. I'm going to play around with this because actually that might be the perfect spot for for the shower. So what I want to do, let's move this over. We're going to copy this because we know we need a door into that storage space. I'm going to rotate this toilet. Yeah, 
Now I make it a little bigger. Okay. So again, we're we're basically within that 14 foot. Something like that. Okay. And then over here, what we'll do, we'll do the vanity. And we're gonna have to, and we'll have to do a little less. Okay, so let's do 30. Because we need to get that. That's the one thing we need to get is the, hold on, the finish. Okay, so now we can do that dimension at six foot one. Okay, and then we want that to be Six foot by three foot, perfect. So we'll slide that on in here. Oops. We will extend this. And then I'm going to do wall. We'll do, we'll do straight glass wall, we'll call that. Okay. And then We'll do a door, but I need to do, um, yeah, and the casing, if I go to render this, I don't want interior casing. There we go. So now, yay, um, and then sink. There. Okay, so we've got this one is bath. I don't know if I always drops down. Okay, so we've got bath. Um, I want to make a quick note here that this is a steam shower. Okay. Um, so we'll have to build. Actually, the, the client was thinking about doing a freestanding bench, um, generally we do a built-in bench because that's where you can hide the Mr. Steam unit um, for access if you need to ever fix it. But depending on the size, we might be able to figure out something out here in the hallway where maybe we refer something out here and have the access panel out there um, just for future maintenance, whatever. Um, and then that way you can have the look that he wants, which is that freestanding one. And then this is storage. Storage. All right. So I think we have really quickly but pretty effectively gotten this done. We know that that's it. Okay. I'm gonna pull that dimension down here. And then the other thing we wanted to do here was um, some potential built-ins. Oh, that's facing the wrong way. Oh, wait, wait. So we're just going to carry that down. So now that room is finished all the way around. Oh, the bedroom, we didn't do that. Perfect. And then same thing out here. And I'm just going around the perimeter and drawing that interior wall to show where that drywall is going to be. Ah. So hang on. So I draw it. Go away. We don't need that. 
and it's trying to create a room where there is. Okay, there we go. So, yay. Okay, and then oh, we're also right here. Let's scoot that down to the corner. There we go. So now that's all framed out really nice. I don't see any other issues with this. Um, other than just throwing on a few dimensions. So I've actually got to run, but thank you so much for tuning in today. I really hope you've enjoyed it and can't wait to stream next time. So if you haven't already, please take a quick moment, like, comment, share, tell your friends. I am here on YouTube. I try to, well, over the holidays I didn't, but I'm trying to post a couple times a week. Um, I am also trying to post once or twice a week over on Twitch TV. So Vision Custom